What's up, everybody? What's up? I am Jason Hall. Once again, welcome to Murals in the Market Live. Every Saturday, 11 a.m., we go live with the different artists from all over the world to give you a little bit of insight into how they ended up at Murals and what they're doing now and all that jabber jib in between. I am the Jason of all trades. Not only do I do uh, Murals in the Market Live, but I also do tours of Murals in the Market down at Easter Market. And so if you want more information on how you can access those tours, you can either go to ridedetroit.com or murosinthemarket.com and it'll redirect you and get you into the right place and get you the right information. But please check out our live tours. Not only do we talk about this stuff, but we talk about all the stuff that we've learned doing over 30 different lives with 30 different mural artists. And not only mural artists, but as you learned last week, we talked to even the operations manager. The reason I put that in air quotes is Leah Rupp is way more than that. She is really the Jill of all trades when it comes to murals in the market and taking care of business. So if you wanna check out any of the murals in the market past uh, lives, you can either check them out through our Instagram, uh, go ahead and check out through the archives, or you can uh, check them out on the Ride Detroit YouTube channel. Uh, all of that stuff lives there, so you can check out all the cool stuff and all the stuff you might have missed and all that jibber jazz, man. It is awesome. I'm coming to you live once again from Optimal, otherwise known as Detroit Hustle Harder. Boom, that's my peoples over here on Division Street in Eastern Market. Come through. Check out the show, man. I'm in the front window right now. You can't see it. You know, it's crazy. Every week I come, and it, it is getting colder in Michigan. Trust me, it is getting colder. But when that sun comes through, it shines down on me, boom. That's all I need to start the day. And then I have an amazing conversation, which you're about to see. Last night I hung out with Mary for like almost a half an hour. And you would have been amazed at how like the conversation, I always tell the artist, I'm like, look, we're just going to hang out and have a conversation. And then it's just going to flow by and all that jazz. And it did. Like literally I had to be like, wait a minute, we've been talking for 30 minutes. So let's like you know, chill this out. So in a second, I'm going to bring on Mary. But before I do that, I just want to thank everybody who makes this happen. I want to thank Rula and Jesse and Paige and all the people that support this and everybody that keeps coming on. It means so much to me when I get to see the same name scrolling through, uh, showing love. I'll try to like wave and I'm going to try to be more interactive about the questions you might have. Because when they pop up on the screen, I can't necessarily like push all the buttons. I'm not that tech savvy. So I'm gonna try to figure out if there's a way I can go back. So if you have questions, I can answer those questions. If not, you can always uh, inbox me. I'm at the Jason of All Trades on Instagram. But I'm working on being a lot more interactive with you guys. So if you have any questions that you uh, might have, make sure that I get them and uh, I'll do my best. But without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this week's guest. Man, like I said, this is so rad that you get to have who isn't necessarily like what you would consider the cookie cutter of what people do. So ladies and gentlemen, Mary Iverson. What's going on, Mary? Hey there. Um, sun's coming up here in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming on. I, I always complain. I'm like, it's so early here, but it's 11. I mean, what is it, 8 o'clock over there in Seattle? Yeah, 8 o'clock. Oh, you're a teacher. You're used to getting up early. It's true, but I haven't had to get up for 8.30 classes in a long time. <laughs> is, that, is that by intention, or did you, like, did you plan? Did you say, you know what? I'm just going to not start class till like, noon. Well, it's COVID, and I teach online now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let's do a little dive in, you know, a little background into where you got to where you are because the story of where you are and what you're doing is so big. But I do want people, I mean, where did you get your start in art? You know, because your story always starts when I read it and what you're doing like in 2015. But where did you begin your journey in art? I always ask, when did you feel the spark? Was it, a, were you a kid? Talk to me. Um, you know, I always do art as a kid and I resisted and resisted and thought, you know, I shouldn't be an artist as a profession. And, you know, there's enough discouragement in society that like you can't make money as an artist. And so I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> and there were roadblocks there. And I just failed enough that I'm like, well, I have to accept the reality of who I am and just embrace it. And 
there's no alternative. And so you just find that embracing your artist, your inner artist is a matter of survival. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, body, spirit. I totally get it. I totally get it. It's what you're, and I don't think it's considered failure. I think it's just recognition that maybe that's not the path that you're supposed to be on. Trust me, my mom thought I was supposed to be a lawyer because back in the day, well, you know, back in the day, you know, for a person of color, there were really only three ways out of, out of it. It was either athlete, lawyer, or doctor. And that's, you know, so my mom really, she had a doctor, so she thought she was going to have a lawyer. But that was sadly, sadly mistaken. So I get it. I don't think it was failure. I think you just recognized that that was something else that, that, that there was a spark in you that was bigger than that. Totally. And, you know, our, the makeup of our society and the balance really values what in academia we call STEM. And it's science, math, English, tech, like the, that's where the money is. But you and I know that the heartbeat of the world is art and we're what connect people you know, if you think about what brings you joy, it's listening to music, looking at art. So we are upholding the joy in the world. You know, other people might be taking care of our bodies, helping us, you know, medically, getting our internet to work, you know, but art is so valuable and, you know, our hearts connect through it. So it's so important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, so you're, you decided that you're, you're not going into medicine and you're going into art. Once again, there's a gap between you becoming a professor. And so how did you what, talk to me about that path? You know, where are you going now? You've decided you don't you're not going to be a doctor and you're going to be an artist. Did you start doing fine art? Did you start focusing on a specific type of art? Um, I changed schools and I enrolled in art school. And I swear the first day I walked into the doors and went into class, I felt like I was home. It was like, wow, I am where I'm supposed to be. And I wanted to be an illustrator. So there's a lot, of, when you're an illustrator, your work is really client driven. You know, you're, you're collaborating with the client and what they want and what they want to pay you for. And that gets, that is wonderful. And I, I got a lot of opportunities that way but it becomes kind of soul crushing after a while. And like, I felt like I was this assembly line kind of producer of work and it was going great, but it was just a little bit less rewarding. And so then I started developing my own style and um, I actually went to grad school to just sort of help me break out of like, I'm an illustrator, I do things people want and just try and find my own way. And um, that really opened up you know, self-expression, like, what do I even want to say in the world? You know, what do I want to do and be? And um, then I found this landscape painting and this whole like environmental message. And that, once I found that, it was like the art world just exploded for me. Like I connected with so many people and it, it just became so much fun. And then the mural started and the more I'm in the mural community, the more I see how, you know, art connects us all and it's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. We talked yesterday about, you know, you have been affected deeply, even more so than I think most people I've met by mural art. Um, talk to me about your journey, you know, talk to me first of all, like about let's get into murals in the market and then we can sort of come around to some other things, you know, because your meals in the market was a deep experience for you. It was, you know, I had only done a handful, small handful of murals before um, I got invited to murals in the market. So I was just getting into that world and, you know, finding the generosity of spirit in it. And then um, when I came to murals in the market, I was petrified. I was like, everyone's a rock star and who am I to be here? And wow. And, it, everyone was so embracing and generous with me and I ended up you know succeeding in my mural but only with so much help um just the spirit of generosity of the whole murals in the market from Jesse and Rula down to like they infect everybody with that beauty you know and so I experienced that as an artist kind of for the first time because I come from um you know being a being an illustrator 
trying to make it in the gallery world, it's so cutthroat. It's so intense and you're competing, right? To get a spot in a good gallery, you're competing against other artists. To be an illustrator with success, you're competing. It's just like, you know, ego, right? Me, me, me. And then the, the mural artists, the mural community, and especially murals in the market, it's so us, us, us. And I went from petrified to just immensely gratitude and feeling connected, you know, at murals in the market and feeling helped and supported. And then I felt like I became this ambassador for that, you know, like I came back to my classroom different. I became, you know, instead of like pushing students, you know, be better, you know, you're, it's a competitive world. I mean, I was still nice, but I <laughs> brought back to the classroom, you know what? Everybody gets an A unless you prove differently. Like I, and I'm gonna give you everything you need and welcome and whatever you bring to my classroom, I love it. Like, let's do this. And I found as a teacher, people do better. The more you give, the safer you make them, the more you love people, the better they do. And so when people are relaxed, they find they're motivated and they learn more and they're better. I'm like, wow, the more I let go with teaching, the better my students are doing. It was like this flip of reality. Like you don't have to push people. You just have to love people. I love it. I love it because you went through a fair amount of you know, effort. You, I mean, you didn't just show up and start painting. I mean, you had... You went through some stuff. Let's talk about your story of what you went through to get that mural done. And when you're talking about the love that was shown, yeah. you, had a, you had a crew working on that thing. I did. Um, I, when I showed up, I had a particular wall. You know, Jesse and Rulo had this wall for me. It was by McDonald's, I think. It was, gnar it was a gnarly wall. It was the brick were like, you know, those old brick walls and there were, we got up there at night and we're projecting my design, which I'd never done. I was trying to project my design and I'd never done it. Like everybody's like, oh, we need really to help this girl. So I get up on, this, on the lift and like there's spiders in the, there's like caves in the wall. It was so old. And I'm like, I don't know how to draw on this wall because my work is so like precise. You know, I have to have these perfect lines. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So I'm up there with like my pencil, right? And Kelly Golden's like, uh uh, let's get you the tools you need. So she brings this paint up and we're trying to work with the projection and you know, it just didn't go well. And then the next day, um, Jesse's like, you know what, your wall fell through. And I don't know if he was saying that because it actually, the, because the permitting in my wall fell through or he was just trying to say like, you're not up to the level of this wall, we're gonna find you a better wall. Right? I don't know if he was just, I'll have to clarify that with him. But anyways, that wall was over. And so it was like two or three days, like to find a new wall and get that wall prepped, right? And so I'm hanging around headquarters, like times tick tock, you know, at a mural festival, you have like less than a week to get your mural done, right? Right, right. So tick tock, the days are going by. I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so he finds me this 200 foot wall, you know, 150 foot wall, finally, and it was pristine and perfect. But I had three days, you know, maybe four to finish it. And we're like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, um, you can't. so, so I get going and he's like, you need help. So shades helped me for a day and then also toured me around Detroit and introduced me to his friends. He was so great. And then, um, Southwest Freddy helped me for like two, at least two days. And then I had a friend um, from Portland that had just happened to be in Port in um, Detroit at that time. And I'm like, Hey, how you doing? You want to <laughs> want to help? You want to meet the murals in the market people? And he's like, awesome. Because you know how mural people are generous, generous, generous. So he, he comes to my wall for a day. It's hot. It's like 95 degrees. Yeah. 95% humidity. My wall is west facing, so muralist snow. That is the hottest of the hot. It's dark because it's a dark blue mural, and it was it was so hot. <laughs> so I had a lift with an umbrella, right, to keep me from heat exhaustion. But I'm like, if you're helping me, you get the lift with the umbrella, and I'm gonna 
struggle with the ladder and the wall, you know, like you get it. Anyway, so he helped me, Southwest Freddie, Kelly Golden. I didn't know how to use a um, chalk line yet, which is like, how could I not know how to use a chalk line? I do straight lines in my murals all the time. <laughs> so she's like, you don't know how to use a chalk line? Let me show you. And so she helped me and I, we got it done. We got the mural done. It was a miracle. <laughs> But I could not have done it without that help. And that, you know, no man is an island. It's all a team. And it just, it changed me. It was a beautiful thing. Yeah. And yeah. And when we were talking, so now, you know, it changed the style that the way you teach, but now you teach mural art. Were you teaching yes. mural art? Were you teaching it prior to the, that situation happening? Or did you invent the curriculum and come up with that programming? Prior, uh, after that it was a combination like I um my college is really they're so supportive of all these adventures I go on and the things I want to do with my art it's really amazing so uh we have what's called an exceptional faculty award so you can get a mini grant and so prior to murals in the market I mean I'd done like a small handful of murals and I'm like I'm gonna teach mural class because I teach painting all the time and I'm like murals are now students are interested in it i need to you know make my curriculum interesting and modern so i developed this mural painting class um in 2017 and then i got to go to murals in the market and i'm like i need to learn all these techniques from the best of the best of the best and you know what i learned it and because i had to learn it and people helped me learn it right so southwest freddie's like if you're low on a budget, here's how you thin your paint. It works just as good, you know, a little bit like all those little simple tools, right? He showed me that. Kelly Golden showed me how to use a chalk line. Uh, Shades showed me how, like I was all doing a grid on my computer and he's like, why are you doing that? <laughs> your wall is cinder blocks. Cinder blocks are a grid. Your grid is there. <laughs> And so he said, you got to use this program called Procreate. You put, you take your photo, put a, your design over it like a skin, and there you have your image gridded out with cinder blocks. You just count, you know, the grid. So he taught me that. Um, and so I got to bring all these skills, you know, projection. I knew about it, but I hadn't done it. Kelly Golden helped me with that. Jesse helped me with that. Um, even though I failed, now I know how to do it. Um, and then I went around those days where I was like waiting, I had no wall, right? I went around to the other murals and said, how are you doing this? What tools are you doing? What are the brushes? What kind of paint? Um, so I learned tools from the masters, right? From the women who are killing it out there from everybody. And then I brought it back and it enriched my class so much because now I can you know, here's how you do it. Here's, here's what kind of wall you might encounter and what you're going to do about that. And so it made my class better. It was like the timing was perfect. Yeah. And it's the age old saying the teacher never stops learning. I mean, you went there and in that week, you probably learned more than you had learned about murals in a, in a huge period of time. Cause you were in it. I was in it and, and in trouble. <laughs> right. Right. So what's and still, it? muralists know more than me about murals. Like I have this wonderful woman that helps me on a lot of my murals, Lena Cholowinski. She's Bones and Gold on Instagram. And she helps me with murals. And she's always teaching me something because she's done a thousand murals. Like it's her whole livelihood. And she's always teaching me something. Every mural she helps me with. Yeah, yeah. So do you find that there's a lot of particular interest specifically from students now as far as murals as a specific art form? Or do you think kids are saying, oh, well, it's sort of an elective, one of those things, or are kids coming in? Like, I'm always curious about this. Like, and I talk about it when I do the tour because everybody comes from a different background. And I say, you know, there's some artists that live that quote unquote street life. And then there's others that went to school and took a class. And I didn't literally know there was a class, but are you finding that there are a lot more students that are specifically interested in mural art? Nope. 
they don't really know about it until they're in my class and they're like, we're doing what? Okay. How? And because th the thing about it is academia street, like it's like Wall Street, Main Street. Mm -hmm. And academia is so immersed in the competition, you know, get good grades and this academic, um, you know, murals aren't considered Guggenheim stuff, right? Um, what was that, the show in LA that, um, is it Deitch Projects did, the street art show, the giant show, and it was like the most popular thing that the um, art museum in, in LA ever did, but it got totally panned by art critics, you know? So that it's this separation. So my students are in academia, right? And they're coming and they're gonna learn formal painting, classic painting, and I'm like, we're gonna do murals. And at first they're surprised, but then they get so into it, like so into it. It's like herding cats, trying to get people to work together. You know, these techniques, it's scary, it's hard. You're out in the sun painting, but by the end they're just laughing and working together. And just, it's, it's, a, it's a once in a lifetime moment for some of those kids. And, and then their eyes are open to like, wow, I went to this other city and I saw murals everywhere and I saw tagging everywhere and I never saw it before. Do you talk about that when you talk about mural stuff? Do you talk about the illegal side of things? The, do you talk about graffiti? Yeah, the, because the, the town I teach in is a, is a small town and it's an um, it's agricultural town. Um, there's a lot of conservative politics in the town I teach. And so that, you know, that culture is going to grow up thinking that tagging is graffiti and it's illegal and just focus on that it's ugly and it defaces private property. And so when I teach art history, I do a section on murals, street art. And you have to start with the street art movement in New York and the competitive, um, really fun culture of that you know, Main Street versus, not even Main Street, but Back Street, like um, tagging and writing and the beauty of that and then moving from that to, you know, street art and renegade um, wheat pasting and all that stuff. And then up to like, you know, now we have publicly sanctioned city murals. And um, so I teach them that whole range and a lot of them by the end are like, yeah, graffiti is actually kind of beautiful. I mean, there's some that's like, ah, like you could have taken more time there, you know, those quick hits, right? But, you know, I open eyes to like, this isn't defacing. And furthermore, who's to say this is their property in a way? Like I break down, I break apart that notion. Like you're okay with a billboard being in front of your face all the time. You don't get to choose, right? So what's so wrong about art being in your face who says the visual realm belongs to corporations to advertise stuff like right. let, let's turn that on its head the visual realm should enrich us and beautify it the world and not just sell us on stuff and steal from us you know so it's just i shatter these conservative ideas have you had that student that come up to you and really like because i was that kid who would have, would have, you would have been my favorite teacher. And I would have hung out in your room, like, in all my off periods, like, just like around you. Have you ever had that student that you've seen really start to shine? And you said, you know what? I think you should maybe go this way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just the, we're a small school, but the handful community that is art and feels at home. Like I did that first class in art school, just like, they belong here. They they just feel at home and we enrich that, you know, community aspect, that support. And then they go on and be artists and go to four, like I teach at a two year college. So they go on to a four year and they come back and they're like, I'm at a four year university. And it's like, it's not that great. I really think I loved your classes. I even had a, a student, he was in a, in the art program at a university and he's like, I don't feel supported there. Can I do my painting in the studio at this college? And so he would do his homework in my school studio because it's nurturing there, you know? I'm like, 
if you're going to paint in this style, I'm going to help you paint in that style. And so then he went to university and it's academic and they're like, you can't do illustrative work. You can't do space paintings. Like you need to do like academia does, right? So he got this pushback. Yeah, that's crazy. So we're, I, I, I can see it 100%. So we talked for a second about your style. You know, you talked about you're very, you have used linear lines and things of that nature. Let's talk about your style. And where do you draw some of your inspiration for your style from? Um, my style is like this clash between I love landscape painting and, you know, leaves and trees and all these wavy lines. And then I have this aesthetic in me that loves perfection and control and sharp edges. And I was landscape painting. Um, I used to take my easel out. I was one of those kooky plein air painters, you know, with my hat and my oil paints and my little French easel. And I went out all the time and I ended up at the shipyards in Seattle. And then I got an invite and a permit to paint at the container ship terminals. Like that would not happen right now. So I was like, trucks were everywhere and containers were everywhere and those huge cranes, you know, anybody that lives in Oakland knows what that looks like, the port culture. And the, the people embraced me and I got to go up in cranes and be over boats and like, it was intense. And so that painting containers, those sharp lines, you know, rect rectangular ge geometry came and I made it fit into my landscape painter organic mess the organic aesthetic and then when those two you know incompatible things met i'm like oh this is like uh -huh. the world uh -huh. this is nature meeting yeah. human like okay how you know where how do we find balance here yeah no i love your stuff it's dark i tell you when i do the and i don't mean like dark and like the like dark sense of like evil but i mean it's dark so it's taken me a couple of different times to really see the different layers you know like when i'm doing a tour you know you're right next to tony hooligan and his is this massively colorful piece and i hit yours and i'm like and there's mary iverson right there and i'm like this is actually one of my favorite pieces and i'm like then i have to really break it down do you remember that piece and like do you remember um or do you just was it just a piece that came out or did you take into context what you were doing or where you were, or does that go? So I guess I'm asking, does that go into when you decide what your paintings or your murals are gonna be? For the murals, um, well, first of all, I keep forgetting this. If you're my student, if you're in one of my classes and you're here, you get extra credit, just say. <laughs> yes, yes. I was that guy always looking for extra credit. Yeah. So if just, you're giving it out. <laughs> just tell me, you can email me. Students, you know how to do that just email me unicorn and the word unicorn and you get 10 points right there. <laughs> I, I like to feel like I played a part in a student's life now, somehow being, you know, made better. You know, I, if we hadn't done this, thanks Rula and Jesse for that too. You know, <laughs> that is awesome. So what is, what are you doing next? You know, so right now we're, you're teaching during COVID. I mean, it's, talk to me about the challenges of that. Um, studio art online. Hello. So, right. Oh, but I'll tell you when COVID hit, my first thought was my students did not ask for this. They did not sign up for this. I got to take care of them. It's like a, I feel like it's like a sacred responsibility. These students are coming to my classroom, right? I, I embrace them and now they're like online. They didn't want to be online. So I took it as this labor of love. And when we found out we were going to be online for more than just a couple weeks, I just hunkered down. I was like, my studio was my bunker. And I set up this whole way to film technique videos. I did every assignment and filmed it and edited it and made these like every assignment. Go, I, I go through the whole thing and video and I edit it down to 10 minutes and all the instruction. And so I did that for my for I had four classes and I did every single assignment in video and posted it. We have this sort of website that we run classes on. Huh. And I was day and night, like I still haven't recovered from that, but I felt this intense responsibility. So now 
And then, you know, when you're in the studio teaching, you can answer every question that comes up right then and show it. And I'm like, I have to film every potential question, you know? So if you take one of my online classes, it's thorough. Like, I, I feel like to the best of my abilities, I put everything you need up there. And then I'm on email all day. So if you're in the middle of an assignment, you can email me and I'm like, oh yeah, red and yellow makes orange. That's how you do orange, right? Yeah. Not like they send me an email and then the next day I answer it. I mean, they're in the middle of doing a project. They need an answer then, you know, so. And just like they didn't sign up you did for this, you didn't sign up for this either. I mean, how do you judge art online? Like, I can't even imagine because a lot of that is based on, like you said, textures and things like that. How can you even begin to, do you just move the scale and say, all right, well, this is good enough for now and we'll get back to, I mean, how do you even begin to wrap your mind around that? I, this is an ongoing, never solvable thing because it's also subjectivity, right? So I think of it as like, it's woodshop class. You've got your tools, you've got your um, table saw, your chop saw, your, your, right, your electric sander. You need to know how to use those things. You could know, so I, I'm like, you gotta know how to do composition. You gotta know line, you gotta know how to use value. You gotta know, and just like in your woodshop, if you know all the tools, you may or may not make a masterpiece. That's not up to me. And I can't control that or judge that but you need to show me you know how to use the tools, right? So in painting class, you gotta be able to stretch a canvas. You need to know how to draw on canvas. You need to how, know how to sketch from an idea to the canvas, et cetera. So I teach those tools and I grade the tools. That's gotcha. how I first grade. So I'm gotcha. not getting into like, this is bad. <laughs> I don't like it. It's not good enough or, you know, Michelangelo wouldn't have done it or, you know, it's like, <laughs> do you know the tools yeah now speaking of stretching a canvas and that's crazy that you brought that up because i have a question for you okay if somebody paints on a canvas can you stretch that canvas after it's been painted on or should you just like should you just how would you hang that or, or display it because i have a painting that somebody made for me this is personal is on stretcher bars or off stretcher bars right now uh, off was it ever on stretcher bars? No. No. Yeah, you can you can um, either buy or make the stretcher bars that are as close to the dimensions of your of the image area as as possible, and then you you wrap it and staple it around the stretcher bars. I mean, if you brought it to a framer and said that's what I want, you know, a framing shop would do that for you. So it's just a matter of stretching around the bars, stapling it. And you can paint the sides if you want, you can frame it if you want, or you can hang it straight on the wall if you want. And then if it's bumply and loose or whatever, you can, after you stretch it, if it's sort of wavy, you can put a little water on the back and it'll, it'll tighten it like a drum and it'll be perfect on your stretcher bars. I love it. I'm literally doing that project today. I mean, I, I had to ask it. I see, I had a master. I'm learning from the masters. I had one here. I got to take advantage. Yeah, a friend of mine painted something for me and I'm trying to hang it today. So okay. there you go. well there you have it. Email me when you're doing it or we can zoom. <laughs> I'm not get I'm not gonna do that to you. You have four classes. How many students but it's do you Saturday. have? But how many students do you have? I mean I was thinking of this question. You have four classes. How many students do you have? Uh, well right now I have like sixty. 60 and you wanna 70, add sixty one? You want to add 71? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to stretch this thing no. and then I'll There's send you the, <laughs> I'll send you the picture. Just <laughs> so, shout out. <laughs> so what is next for you on, on the mural front? Are you really concentrated right now? Just on, on, has it slowed down? You know, I talked to certain artists um, during this time again, during the pandemic, some artists, you know, I talked to Shifi McFly. He's like, I'm working right now. I talked to other artists and they're like, no, nah, I'm not doing too much. So are you doing a lot of mural work right now? Or are you just focused on school? I'm focused on school. And, you know, usually I have a mural out in the future somewhere, but there's nothing. But let me tell you, it's the universe conspiring because I just had shoulder surgery and I'm not going to be up and running till summer. Like it was that big of a surgery. 
so right now I don't have a mural looming where I'm thinking, oh, how am I gonna, you know, I know a mural will come when I'm ready, but right now all I'm focused on is healing the shoulder and getting through my classes, you know, um, but the mural will come when I'm ready. And then I'll need a lot of help, even more than before. So I need a good team. Rock. I need help, help, help. <laughs> that is awesome. Mary, I, I, I don't, it, did I forget anything? Because I know there were a couple of things I was supposed to write down and I wrote them down, but I left them in my bag. Did we cover everything today? Because this is the first time I feel like the pressure of like, I mean, like I said, you're a professor, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I know I'm not being graded. Paige is right over there. She might be grading me. But I, did I cover everything? Because you, you know, you have, are, are like I said, you've pulled so much from murals in the market. It's so much of your, who you are now. I just want to make sure I get everything. Am I forgetting anything? I don't know. We just went in a new, new space. Like, you're blowing my mind with what a great conversationalist you are. And you just make me feel so relaxed and like it's fun and, you know, I don't care what we talked about. It's just fun. I don't even remember what we talked about. Right? You know, that's, then I, I feel like that I've somewhat done my job. You know what I mean? I mean, I wish we'd have got to spend more time talking on the bike ride because you're one of the few artists that I, every week I'm like, did you ever get to go on one of our, like, artist-only rides? And they're like, no, man, I didn't get to do it. But you actually got to experience the magic that happens on that ride. For me, as being a fan of everybody on it and everybody who works on it. And then I get to lead them where I like to take them. Man, I mean. That was the coolest moment. That was like a highlight of not just the murals, but life that all these artists get on these bikes. Like we're just this ragtag gang, right? And I remember <laughs> Hawk, so he had this, um, like a speaker, you know, like a Bluetooth speaker and he lashed it onto his handlebars and he was playing, um, Kendrick Lamar, <laughs> so everybody was like singing into the songs and we're riding through Detroit. You took us along that bike path that was the old railroad, you know? Yeah, the cut, the yeah. Cool mural tags along it, you know, so we got to see like the, the you know, backstreet culture of murals and we went along the river and by the end of the ride, it was night and so we got to see all the lights and, and Hoxo's Bluetooth fell off his bike a couple times. <laughs> anyway, it was just the magical what a great thing you give to people it's just these bike tours and it's a way to experience a city that if you're driving through a city you don't see it you don't feel it but and walking's too slow so biking you get to see everything and you're close to it and and i you know if i'm ever in detroit i want to do a bike tour again with you absolutely i i'm gonna it's on me we're gonna do another trust me we will do another artist ride it will live again it, 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 that type of energy, we can't let that go. And we're all a big family now. And so, like, you know, the way you talk about Freddie, and you, I know you can't wait to see him, man, because that dude is doing his thing. So there will be a day that we all will come back together. Trust me. I have an idea. Student mural. Students, okay. what school would love to learn and be involved in a mural, you know, what, what group of students need to get out and experience mural painting? I asked you that. And okay. maybe, maybe there's a student mural aspect of these mural festivals that could be thought about. Are, are you guys hearing this? The, the powers that be? Student mural? Are all the Just people putting listening? it out there. If it putting it in happens. the sphere? Putting it in, I know like I know Sheafy's done some work with with Detroit Public Schools and he's done some sort of paint by numbers thing but I don't know if we have one in murals in the market and I will check into that and I will make sure that it, we we make that happen okay so leading up to it you have design class right and all the kids get to make a design and then we decide what one to paint and then everybody teams up to paint the mural See, I can't say no to this. You have 70 students, 71, including myself. So I don't have nearly that many students, so I can't turn this down. Now I have to take it on. Thank you for giving me another project to work on, you know, here in Detroit. You know, like I said, I'll involve Paige in all this. 
Mary, thank you for coming on today. You are awesome, awesome, awesome. When they told me, they were like, you have to talk to Mary. I was like, uh, you know what? I, I knew, I, like, as soon as they broke it down that like you're a professor, you're teaching mural art, I'm like, ooh, we're going to get along. You know what I mean? So, and this just proves it. Thank you for coming on. We're getting a ton yeah. of thank yous in the thread. If there are any questions that came through, I'll make sure that you get them. Uh, is there any way that we can look at your art? You have a website, uh, Instagram. You want to give them your information? Yeah, my website is maryiverson.com. Super easy. My Instagram is themaryiverson.com. Long story. You have a the on yours, too. I do. Um, I do, indeed. <laughs> so the Mary Iverson. And I want to hear how your canvas stretching project goes, even if you don't need me. Okay. I send me when you're done. If you finish without needing me, I need a photo. Okay. If you need me in the process, I'm here. You see this, ladies and gentlemen, I can't even deal with this right now. <laughs> Mary, if you want to see the painting that I'm stretching, you can see it in my Instagram. It's actually my most current photo right now. So you'll see it's a big old thing. So you can see it. And I will <laughs> let you know how my <laughs> progress goes. Um, Hopefully I don't mess this one up, man. You know what I mean? But once again, Mary, thank you. This is awesome. When I come to uh, Seattle, I've never been to Seattle. So trust me, when all, I, I, before all this happened, it was on my list of places to go. I've been to 39 states, and Seattle, Washington is not one of them. So I need to come out and visit and try to catch a fish and do all that touristy stuff and look at some good art. But I'll make sure Let's I hit a you bike up. Tour. I'll take you on a bike tour. Will you stop? <laughs> Will you just stop being incredible now, please? No, now you're taking me on bike cool. tours. I'm letting you go. Mary, thank you. Okay. I'll thank talk you. to you soon. You, oh, my God. That was awesome. See you later. Man, see, do I tell you every week I say it? Every week I say, when I come in here, I'm like, it's cold. I'm tired. But then the sun hits me. And then I get to talk to yet another amazing artist from Mills in the Market. And they remind me that the world is, is in a, full of amazing people and is still an amazing place. Thank you for joining me for Murals in the Market Live. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. I am Jason Hall, a.k.a. the Jason of all trades. Please add me on Instagram. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers so I can get the swipe up. So everybody who's been watching, please do that. Also, if you want to support the artist, go to muralsinthemarket.com or Run Times Run. Dot com and get some art and keep your eyes open at spotlight detroit on the instagram so you can see the progress of what's going on over there i cannot wait i cannot stress it hurry up over there i can't wait thank you for joining me everybody if you also last but not least want a tour of murals in the market go to ride detroit.com you can find out all the information we do walking tours which will probably be a little more suitable for this time of year and then spring, summer, we do e-bike tours. But once again, all that info is on RideDetroit.com. I'm Jason Hall. I'll see you guys next Saturday.